right, you ready? Yeah. It is time for the Vibecast, the podcast chronicling the adventures and escapades of the Philadelphia-based band Chico's Vibe. And yes, thank you very much. Time marches on. Thank you. We've Woo! reached episode number nine. Wow. Nine. Number nine. Uh, let's play that backwards. Number nine. nine. Yes, right. Number nine. Turn me on, dead man. That, that's what I'm. <laughs> Tony's the walrus. That's <laughs> Uh, that was Chico's fly backwards. It's, all, it's already it, off the rails. You realm. got shots, You go. Just say Tony's the walrus. <laughs> oh my God! I'm John Parkinson. I'm here with producer Matt Kelly, and we're our podcast. On the precipice of May 2022. All right. May's a fun month. It's got great weather, lots of activities. There's May 1st, which is May Day. Uh, oh, lot, lots yeah. of things. All kinds of crazy events happen on, on May we'll Day. We'll talk about May Day a little later. It's an on. interesting history, May Day. Yeah. But, uh, mm. There's also Cinco de Mayo, and the, the month closes out with Memorial Day, the unofficial start of summer. What a hell of a month May is. You know, I never it is. That way, <laughs> never <laughs> got May flowers and it's all also that. Like the yeah. month that's probably why the, I made that song, you know? May procession. Walking through the park one day. That's oh. probably why. That's probably why I got that, got that song. Very, very. Yeah, I'm sure the, the other day. months are pissed at May because May gets all the attention. <laughs> Has the best wow. car, best best mansion, <laughs> out, of all the, out of all the months. Wait, what? <laughs> Never mind. Sorry, started too early. Sorry. But I thought with May Day, I thought. Oh, I wonder what the distress signal May Day has to do with, oh, yeah, with right. May, May 1. Day, May Day. has absolutely nothing to do with, with May 1 with or the May month Day. of May? Yeah. yeah, it means help me in French. Me. That's oh, really? Said. Yeah. Oh, it's a French word? That. French word in May Day, yeah. Ah. Day. Well, that's okay because it's an opportunity to let our podcast listeners know that there's hope in the air this May and on our podcast because we have our own May Day signal. Yes, right before this podcast, producer Matt Kelly released into the air the Chico's Vibe bat signal. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And, and in response, coming to the rescue to save the day, we have with us once again the music superheroes of Delco. John Gephardt, Ed Mount, and in the nick of time, <laughs> arriving last minute, Dennis Chicchino yes. of Chico's Vibe. So welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to our episode number much, nine. Everybody. Hey, do you guys have a... Uh, a superhero you'd like to be? I know Ed's, but we're going to let him say it. <laughs> <laughs> so obvious. Wait, Ed, go ahead. What your superhero is? Oh, Superman. Yeah, he's very much, yeah. <laughs> Gab, who do... Who, uh, when I was a kid, I watched it all the time. Ultraman. I oh, love Ultraman. Oh, yeah, Ultraman. Yes! Does the Lone Ranger count? You know what? I'm counting the Lone Ranger because yeah, sure. for me, I uh, Z- Zoro. Zoro, I want to be Zoro, but you're uh, Zoro. Yeah. Can, can I, be, I don't know if he's really a superhero. Can I be Tonto? Yes, Kimosawa. <laughs> yeah, I'd say Zoro is as much superhero as Bruce Wayne as Batman because not, not neither possess have really super physical powers. powers. Their intellect and they push themselves to their fullest, and they have yeah. this code that they live by. Very good. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back here for that. Answer the question. Oh uh, my goodness! Uh, uh, DC Ed. started out as Detective Comics, and that's Ed. why that's why it's called DC. Is Ed. it? I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah look at awesome. look at everything that you learn on our yep. podcast. Look at May the guy Day. with no girls talking to him <laughs> in the Ed, corner. The, the, the tape uh, the tape came off your glasses. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> fix up that back. I didn't know that was Detective the Lone Comics. Ranger. Gabby, is that why you would, horse. is that why you would <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut me off on those long? And you didn't rides? know who he was yeah. with that mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, how's your spring been so far? It's been good. We had a yeah. Gigs are kicking in again. You know. Yeah, we yeah. had three gigs so far. Right? Yeah. And I thought, but before we jump in, I thought I'd give our our podcast listeners heads up what we're going to talk about um, on the agenda today. I do. I did want to do a quick uh, recap of uh, recent gig we did the mm. Saboteurs Scholars Scholars. Oh, excellent. Mm-hmm. Just because oh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, we're going to cast. Our Chico's Vibe, the Netflix series, we're going to cast that today. We're okay. going to talk about some possible casting. We're going to take a deeper dive into our song from the set list, which this week is 25 or 64. Yeah, you have a very mm. ambitious agenda tonight, John. Yeah. I do. That's what the editing is for. Moving. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to close it out with an early Cinco de Mayo celebration from... 
uh, a Chico's Vibe favorite. Uh oh. Oh. Or Chico and Gabby on. No. Well, no. We can. Is... We can even do special guest direct from Tony's toilet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's where the okay. mic is. That's only it's only because the best acoustics. <laughs> right, I don't want you, right. His place is not a toilet, but you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just acoustically. I'm trying to think of it that way. <laughs> but, to, but to start off, I thought I wanted to just uh, recap a little bit. We had a, a really fun gig uh, earlier this month, and it was, I think, a really worthwhile occasion. And I want to talk about a little bit the, um, you know, the Nick Sava Sava right. Tourist Scholarship Fundraiser, mainly because we saw a lot of people mm-hmm. that we haven't seen in yeah. years, and it was just a really fun time and a, and a great event. And I want to give you a chance to talk about. I don't think we did last time talk about Nick a little bit, and you know. Yeah, I think the official name was like, um, what was it, the Oakmont Fire Company Nick Sava Education Fund. Oh, cool. Yeah. And the money that they raised and are still raising because it's, it's they're just going to keep an open link so people can donate money whenever they want. It's uh, going to guys that want to join, young guys that join the firehouse that want to continue their education. And that would be either in like, uh, college or uh, possibly fire school or something like that if, oh, if cool. that costs money or whatever mm-hmm. but that's what it's for it's an education fund to take care of young guys joining the firehouse that want to continue their education in one way or another excellent mm-hmm. and of course nick sava everybody knows nick for god's sake and you know at, at nick's uh, I gave a eulogy at his wedding. Uh, his wedding at his. <laughs> Which one? It was a eulogy. Oh, I mean, that's how you feel. There's that's kind of how you feel when you when a buddy gets married. I just got confused you know, because it. Uh, hey, it's been and great. And that's what Nick would have called it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, at the uh, at the uh, dinner, the memorial dinner that Karen Lani Sava had for him a year later, uh, she wanted me to get up and say a few things, so I got up. And I made it my best man toast because nobody, Nick never had a wedding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, I slammed him pretty good. But, uh, <laughs> because he slammed me my whole life. But at his, d- during his eulogy, which I think they call words of remembrance now, or, you mm-hmm. know, they don't call it eulogy anymore. I said that I became popular in Havertown on Nick Savage coattails. <laughs> the truth. I mean, Nick. Now explain that. He I became mean. a fireman probably as soon as he turned 18, which would have been our first year out of high school. So I was already 18 before we graduated. He turned 18 in November. Fireman, just like that. Bernie McGowan had already joined the fire company. And, you know, Nick became great friends with all those guys up there who we all know now, like Nurt. Yeah. Max mm-hmm. McGoldrick, the Buzzy McGoldrick, all those guys. And they became my buddies through Nick. Excellent. I became yeah. great friends with all those guys. And they covered all of Havertown. I mean, everybody knew all those firemen. And all of a sudden, there I am. I'm playing at the Lamplighter. They all show up. Oh, I'm playing cool. here and there. And they're all, you know, they're all my great friends now. And that's through Nick. And like, that's how my popularity <laughs> spread in Havertown. <laughs> Not in Ardmore. That was a different story. <laughs> <laughs> the Twin Cities of Ardmore. <laughs> but everyone knew Nick, and, and everyone knew Nick was the biggest, for lack of a better word, ball buster in yeah, the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He started in kindergarten and just continued through our whole life. But deep inside, Nick had that soft heart. Yeah. He had a soft heart. He was generous. I saw it come out. When he started to take uh, the two little liney girls all around, he brought one of them up on stage at Rose Tree on his shoulder. Oh, cool. This is a different Nick Savage than I know. Look at him. He's, like, <laughs> he's t- driving them to concerts. He's picking them up at school. And he's, he's like, you know, Uncle Nick all of a sudden. That's cool. So that's a little bit about Nick Savage. And you guys all met Nick yeah. and you all know and love oh, Nick. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, it. When he first started like interacting with me, he he was at Keenan's. He came out to a Keenan's, and Rosemary was was saying, "How do you know Goodie?" He's like, "Who who are you talking about?" 
She's like, Gucci, the sax player. And he goes, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, that's what we call him. He didn't tell you that's what we call him. And that was it. So we're playing a set, and you an- announced me after a song, and he starts yelling from the crowd, Gucci! Gucci! <laughs> <laughs> the only time I feared Nick was when I would have to miss the Oakmont Fire Company <laughs> annual gig. <laughs> <laughs> no, what a, uh, but we had a, such a, such a great crowd. There were so many people oh, there yeah. that I hadn't seen. Were you off the so surf and surf list? Nice. He knocked you off. I was, oh, yes, see, yeah. Because <laughs> that's how you used to try to sell at the Gallagher every year. Come on, Matt, what? surf and turf, <laughs> surf, and turf. <laughs> surf and turf on the break. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll do it, Nick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just another thing I like about being in the band, that being a part of events like yeah. that. Oh yeah. yeah, that was a great event. They yeah, raised a lot of money. They did, and uh, Kelly bid Kelly bid two hundred dollars for a signed autographed picture <laughs> of John Gephardt. <laughs> Who got that anyway? Oh, uh, Kelly. Kelly did. Oh, yes. How much did that go for? Two hundred dollars. Wow, twenty two hundred dollars. Yes. Wow. Because <laughs> I have his first year trading card set, and I I haven't checked I haven't checked the price on it. Here's one of him by the piano. It's There's the another picture, one of him by the, the piano. It's the picture in the big shoulder jacket. <laughs> the There's a rare one with an accordion. You can't find that one. The next one's with him and the accordion's on fire. You got to go on eBay to find that one. <laughs> you know, that was, uh, I guess, Christmas gift from Gabby to me. Yes. Right? <laughs> And it's set on there. And You're the good, best, John the, Gephardt. The goodness of your heart, yes. you donated it. Exactly, yeah. for Nick Saba. <laughs> but just a little story about that picture. You know, I brought it home. I'm like looking at it. I'm like, oh, this is great. So I start putting it all around the house different days. I have it on like Monica's <laughs> nightstand one night. Then, she, you know, she'd put it back on my pillow. Then the next day I would have it in Grace's room and then on the top of the TV. So it made its rounds. <laughs> is it was, the one I know where you're kind of like balanced on your knee? Like you're like, he's I think it is balanced that. on his knee. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's kind of looking thoughtful. Yes. Cause I could hear it in my head, like the old movies, they'd have the, the picture by, by the bed and you'd hear the, the voiceover. <laughs> you're so far away. In another country fighting for freedom. <laughs> but yet I think of you each night as I lay under the stars. I do, I do need to tell our podcast listeners so Dennis and I are drinking. Ed is not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did that picture ever make it in the bathroom? Oh, I'm sure it did, Gab. I had it everywhere. <laughs> but when Kelly went to pay for it, they're like, you know, you really don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but she did for the cause yeah. yes oh, that's and for nice. the picture too all right John. all right yeah but uh, it's not an easy segue from that but uh, the last podcast episode we had dr ed jack Lebowski, <laughs> yeah. and he kind of came up with the idea of pope on a cat. rope <laughs> pope on a rope yes find the pope in the pizza <laughs> <laughs> no of casting we're talking about Chico's vibe, uh, right, the Netflix right, series. Right, so right, ne- right, you know, right, Netflix right. has hit upon some tough times. So it's up to it's up to us, Chico's vibe, to save Netflix with gotcha. the next big hit, Chico's vibe, the Netflix yeah, you're series. Right. That's, in for each episode of the series is based on a memorable Chico's vibe gig. And the last podcast, Doctor Ed had the idea that we should cast the series, and he had one idea um, for you, which we'll talk about. But then. I like I went back on Facebook and tried to solicit casting. All right. <laughs> tried to solicit casting for the band for Chico's Vibe, the Netflix series. And I have that documented. Oh, uh, Jesus. Oh, God. Here today. So I'm going to run through some of the things that were out there. Okay. And then get is, your guys. We're doing casting right now? Yeah. All right, right. Cool. We don't have to stick yeah. with That's these. That's fun. Yeah, it's fun. We don't have to stick with these. But if you have ideas, throw right. them in. You know, so yeah. uh, Dennis. Gabby hated my idea for him. Well, I mean, come on. Let's right, go right let's there. Let's along. start. Let's just let's start with Gabby yeah. because uh, Dennis maybe missed the concept a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Bonacotti? He's on TV. He had a supposed show. to be an actor. He was. He had the, the, the NFL show. He was on a well, million shows. That's not show. acting. He could come in and act like you, Gabby. He did inside the NFL. You're talking about <laughs> he when could you come first in came. And act like you. <laughs> I got to Google this guy. I don't know him. That guy was like the greatest linebacker of all time. He was on, he was on commercials. So there, he did some acting. So then you post Nick Bonacotti and somebody responds, how about Chooch? And I'm like, no, this is not <laughs> what's going off on a tangent. <laughs> but we got a good, recently got a 
I think. Well, I have several ideas. Quintessential Gabby? Yes. Kevin James. I don't know that guy. Oh, come on. Let oh, me see yeah. a picture of him. King of Queens. He's, yeah, you ever King seen of that Queens. Show? Oh, that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. Pearl, yeah. Gabby's sister says he plays keyboards, too. Oh, he does. Yeah, I didn't know oh, that. Oh, yeah, she that. just put something on Facebook the other day. But some other ideas that were out there. John Favreau. Wow. For, that was a good one. He not would play. Gabby. He could play grumpy not for Gabby. Gabby Favreau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have I'm like a dual the role, guy. like Banner and Hulk. Like you have, it's Kevin <laughs> James, but when Gabby's mad, it's John Favreau. Favreau's is he? I thought he was a. Well, he's always kind of crotchety and and. Oh, in, I didn't in, know that. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Am I right? No. Or I maybe like I'm thinking that better. dinner when he would have that I, dinner. I'm not show. liking where this is going. <laughs> Uh, that's not what I was going for. He's a successful Hollywood director now. Too. Right. Anyway, Jack Black. Uh, <laughs> it's a geek. That would be Gabby after a vertical. <laughs> at, okay, a vertical. To, and then for the wild card casting, a young Billy Joel could play Gabby. Billy Joel? Huh? That would be ironic. Or, or an old Billy Joel. Old Billy, nah, Billy Joel looks too old. Like <laughs> a young Billy Joel. I'd like the curly black hair. Well, Gabby never had that. It doesn't have it's, to be exact, but it's for God's sakes. All right, let's move along. Oh, All right, way going, better. I can't wait till you get to him. We're going to Dennis Chicchino. So uh, Rick Anthony was the most um, avid <laughs> <laughs> casting re responder, and he he put he put Andy Garcia. But yeah, I think Ed, no. Ed Jakubowski set the bar high with The Rock. No, uh, <laughs> the bald headed guy. Yes. Come on, you're the rock. Is it Can you cook what the Chico is smelling? Okay, smelling, smelling. The, the, rock is the rock is out. going with the rock Loud personality. Okay. Joe Cocker? That's who That's I put. It. You put Just that. because he was a drunk on stage. So we're going to have go <laughs> we're going to have ghosts on this show. <laughs> Well, there was. That's one thing <laughs> I need dead. to say yeah. because yeah. for the casting, they had to be living. Particularly while there are people that one Dennis Chicchino recommended for every there are people he's recommended for everyone that right. are not living that are or not maybe living. not even actual <laughs> people yes. so they're, gonna, they're gonna do like that digital peter cushing thing yeah like have yeah. a digital uh it's like somebody, avatar some, somebody put de niro that's my cousin terry there you go how about james, play it again play james it again. gandolfini i like the gandolfini uh, there you go. That, that's a good one and then i, I had so for i put a wild card casting idea Actually, I didn't do Gabby's wildcard casting because we got mad. Uh, a wildcard casting idea for Chico would be Samuel L. Jackson. Come on! Uh, <laughs> oh, can you, can't you just picture Samuel L. Jackson yelling at Tony? Yeah. No, I You're going to play the motherfucking song! <laughs> <laughs> do you not understand the motherfucking concept of the motherfucking love train? <laughs> ah, that's good, Chico. I like that. I like that. That's good. Uh, so that's what I got. I mean, do you have any other? Do you have preferences, Dennis? Oh, I like Gandolfini, but now I'm digging Samuel L. Okay. <laughs> By the way, Gabby, do you have yeah, a preference what for was, well, what was my wild card? Did you say? Uh, well, I Billy Joel, or I uh, threw in Alec Baldwin as a potential. Alec I thought <laughs> <laughs> he he's in, he's having good times. He yeah, can use yeah. the word. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We could probably really get. Who him. would you pick? I mean, uh, it for, doesn't have to be on the list. No, for, for you. For I, me, that, yeah. Cagney? Oh man, Henry Winkler. <laughs> oh yeah, he's great yeah. now. You mean like John Travolta? I like yes. <laughs> I, I get like told that. that all the time. I like it's that. So weird because he's like to... playing my keyboards cousins. and he's like acting in a show. It's so weird. <laughs> it's so everybody, weird. Everybody, everybody's a musician. My hand. The... Don't touch my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, good. To like my, my cousins when what? when they were young. The San Aleri kids, when they were real young, they're, you know, some of the, the, uh, all the weddings we played. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about like the Mary boys. Beth and Richard. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. they used to say I was the Fonz. They thought I was the Fonz. I like that idea. Because yeah. my hair. Yeah, and, I hear you, you know. do the Fonz, Gab. Hey. 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 <laughs> Folks at home, you just can't. I, he uh, literally uh, transformed <laughs> in front of us. <laughs> Into the font. Well, well, and Ed's got to be Richie no, Cunningham. No. Yeah, <laughs> he's in a show now. Who? What's it called? Oh, oh, he oh he Barry. Is. Barry is yeah. so good. He's yeah, great yeah, yeah. in it. Yeah, that's a good. All right. all right. So now Ed Mount. Ed Mount. Okay. There were all kinds of suggestions for Ed Mount. Yeah. Um, Damian, yeah. Ed had a lot of good ones. Damian Lewis was. I think that might have been. Somebody right. posted Damian Lewis. He. You know. I don't know if you know him. No. He was in Band of Brothers. He was in Billions. 
Homeland? Oh, is it I Homeland? Know. Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I know who it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, I thought that was a good one. Uh, Woody Harrelson was Rick Anthony's. Yeah, so Rick like that <laughs> no. You're the. You said this is a good I one. I didn't say Woody. I put that for Edge. Oh, All right, Gandolfini. Josh Jacobowski? What are we talking about? Ed Mount. Ed Mount. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay. So, okay, then Conan, which all, of course. Yeah, people say I, that's, all the That would be I my pick. Everybody somebody put, put Jay now, Moore? There was another good one. <laughs> Jay Moore. Oh, what was the other yeah. one? Jay Moore. I got I gotta tell you something. I got I got that on a flight to LA. See the guy that does this. Dennis, you're lagging. Restart the computer. <laughs> He's like Jay, yeah, 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 Moore. <laughs> As Jay Moore, the the the, the guy he was from on Saturday, SNL, night, yeah, does yeah, yeah. Trump. Well, no, no he did a great impression. A new, he's a new guy. That no, but Jay Moore was on SNL. Yes, he, he was. did a great Christopher Walken. Yeah, he used to do one of the best Christopher Walken impressions. How I about got, Christopher Walken for Ed? I got no. I got Christopher Walken as another okay. wild card. Yeah, yeah, he's going to break. Okay. My, uh, wait, uh, Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. Yeah, uh, Better Call Saul. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that guy's good. Ed put not carrot top on the. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> and for the wild card, I had a young Tom Hanks or Ewan McGregor. It would be oh, great, Ewan young McGregor. Tom Hanks. Yeah, I'm going to play the sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Plus, then it has the whole Star Wars things. Yeah, I'm right, not right. Obi Wan Kenobi. Like Ed, who, who do sex. you want? Do you have a preference, or could be something? Damien Lewis was kind of that was like a compliment. He's yes. like, because he, he, he's <laughs> like I, I would have to go to the gym to become him in real life no, he's yeah. playing you though you don't have to play him oh so he would let himself go <laughs> exactly <laughs> you, i'm like you're gonna love preparing for this role you just, tonight i want you to have a pizza with some cheese just, steak. just <laughs> drink Tomorrow, iced tea and eat pretzels oh, for tea. weeks i want you to have an all-carb diet for the next and i want you to look, sit down and watch a lot of star trek and then your body will be perfect for the role it'll transform automatically <laughs> You'll be an Adonis. What do they call that when you just stay in character all the time? Method, Method acting. acting, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what was the guy's Stanislavski? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll bring all right, him so in. next I got, just because they were really interesting, I have Tony. Oh, next. Tony. <laughs> I had a ball with Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis for Tony put... Rasputin. <laughs> but the nature of the show would have to change. It's just him getting killed every episode and not dying. You poison, you poison Tony in the first episode. Bring in some Russian oh speaking. God, yes. That you sta we stab oh him in the God, second episode. Tony. Yeah, like it's like each either. each member of the band kills him in a different episode, <laughs> and he returns in the after credit scene. Oh my God! But then people stuck with that theme. Somebody put Grover from the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Froggy, baby! <laughs> then I got Chewbacca. Tony, we love you, man. <laughs> 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 then, here's one. Uh, uh, Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> you know Tony. Seth Rogen. Yeah, I know, but I'm trying to picture him as Tony. <laughs> well, who would you put it, cast as Tony? Besides Putin. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd. I think oh, you, that's I, a good one. I think you could get Kelsey Grammer to play um, uh, Tony. That's another good one too. <laughs> <laughs> and that wild card. Well, that was like the Cookie Monster because Tony's always eating freaking like the desserts yeah, at weddings. We and, 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 and you resort I'm all not, not. all his lines are like me eat. Me play trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> me no like song. Me hope for next song after Cookie. And trumpet. <laughs> I have to drink a Parmesan. Uh, it changes the whole script. Him and Samuel L. Jackson yelling at the cookie Jab monster. Jacobowski's like, can I take my hand out of his ass now? And we're like, no, it's not a real puppet. It's actually Tony. Oh, shit. Hey. <laughs> oh, my God. Some reason I put as wild card casting Liam Neeson. Oh. <laughs> okay. Big guy, you know? Okay. I have a particular set, set of skills. Of skills. That's a still playing trumpet. <laughs> All right, Ed Jacobowski, I got a few. I got Ricky Gervais. I like uh, that. Who put Gervais? That's great. I, I forget. Yeah. That's a good one. And then uh, <laughs> he just has a British accent for no reason, reason at all. Where do you live? I, I, I live. 
in Delaware <laughs> County. Uh, I don't know this one. Luke, I'm Luke over here Luke trumpet. Wilson. Uh, yeah. I like Luke Wilson. I don't see him. I don't see that. Mike well. Myers? <laughs> he could be in uh, character. Right? And then the wild card I put is Kevin Hart. I think he was. Uh, no. <laughs> was that the wrestler? No, huh? the comedian, <laughs> little, Kevin Hart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next, Brian Farr. Got a couple of good suggestions. Hugh Jackman? Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. He could be any suave, kind of a handsome guy. For if he was still alive, Roy Schreider would be perfect for him. <laughs> but he's what? dead. What? For- Roy Schreider. Roy Schreider. Jaws? Roy Schreider. Yeah, from Jaws. Right? Yeah. yeah. He, he would be a great from Brian Farr. All that We're jazz, there's a dance set. connection there. We're going to need a bigger kit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put Zach Efron. Do you know who he is? Yeah. yeah. I think uh, Brian Farr put that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's always bare chested. Yes. <laughs> all right, John Yaddish. Wait, there should be more for Brian Farr. There weren't more po- posted. I had a wild card of Jason Bateman. You had Oscar Isaac. Uh, on there Oscar Isaac. Yeah, that's that's actually a good. I like one. Jason really Bateman. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Next. You know who Oscar Isaac is? I have no idea. Okay. I'm texting each one of these guys to see if they're available. They <laughs> are. In my, I, don't, I don't mean a name drop or anything, but they are in my phone. So. John Yaddish, his Facebook response is let off with Dennis posting a picture <laughs> of a statue with a guitar. <laughs> It's not until like the third episode we figure out he's not real. You've been really quiet. Yeah, she have been quiet this whole time. Why won't you answer me? I feel ignored. Oh, he's a statue. Oh, oh my, my bad. God. Then uh, uh, Rick Anthony posted a good one. Joaquin Phoenix. That would be a good one. That would be good. Oh, yeah. I am merciful. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. You? Who was that? Who's that? Benedict Cumberbatch. He played. <laughs> yeah. He played uh, uh, Sherlock, Sherlock on the, uh, like a modern version of Sherlock. But the wild card is Christopher Walken. <laughs> so uh, get down. Why is the hot air blowing on me? <laughs> <laughs> My guitar is uh, out of tune. I got too many pedals uh, <laughs> on the ground. Marsupials are fast. <laughs> I want they scare to, me. I want to do the wagon wheel uh, over here. <laughs> oh, I didn't ask for goodness. these powers. Not to, <laughs> not to go off on a tangent, but I love when there's a comedian that imitates Christopher yes. Walken. It's the best. Who are some of the good ones you've seen? The one was Kevin. Um, yeah, that guy's great. Um, oh, God. Kevin Pollock. Yeah, Pollock. Kevin Pollock. 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 Kevin Pollock, he does one. He goes, he said at Halloween, that that was one of his routines. He's like, trick or treat. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) What a conundrum. What a conundrum. He goes, he goes, I have one. See if you can guess what's under my house. That's what he says. (laughs) Trick or treat. You got to look him up. Kevin Pollock, though. He's great. So funny. And he sounds just like him. Well, they had that live version of Peter Pan. I tried to watch it. He played Captain Hook. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. And he's like, Peter Pan. (laughs) And and she's up in a tree. He's like, Peter Pan, uh, get get down. (laughs) And he's got got the hook, you know. I love you. Let me hear that Peter Pan one more time. (laughs) Get down. (laughs) <laughs> oh, we gotta find that. You gotta have him in the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, so he would God. be perfect. That crocodile took my hand. <laughs> I hear the tick of the clock. Of the clock. So I get scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, may, maybe Yaddish. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then for me, there was Bruce Willis always. Come right, through, right, which right, I, like. right. I think. Did you post Bruce Willis for me? No, I put um, name the other guys. Brian Cranston. No, I think I did put <laughs> Bruce Willis. You did. I just double checked. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, somebody put Howie Mandel. I wasn't sure what, how I felt about that. Then <laughs> <laughs> no. I had as my wild card casting Jason Statham, just because I wanted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I see Patrick Stewart. Oh, yes. I see you as That's being good. like this. That's good. You know. I like that one. Yeah. Yes. 
I could go back to football and so. go with Ray Nitschke. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ray Off Nitschke. the pack. <laughs> what, what about Y.A. Tittle? <laughs> it's true because he wore glasses too. Yeah, right? Both ball, of those right? guys. Yeah. Tell you Savalas. Telly Savalas, who loves you, baby. That's how to play this trombone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we start to get into side casting. But so there's Jason Long. <laughs> and there's a bunch of possibilities for Jason Long. <laughs> and you guys, can, you guys can add to this. So I, Zach Galanaficus. <laughs> That's oh, <yeah>. good. <laughs> Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Patton Oswald would be good. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, he'd be a good Jason. Yeah. And then um, John C. Riley. I don't know if you know who he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wild card casting, Jeff Goldblum. So it's a little... <laughs> as, the fl- a, as the fly, though. No! He, has to be, right, right, right. he has to be half fly, half bass player. Because he's a keyboard player, really good keyboard player, mm-hmm. Jeff Goldblum. But then he's got that kind of, you know, out there. Way out. The computer became confused. There weren't supposed to be two separate genetic patterns. It decided to place us together. <laughs> it's now part fly, part human. All right, Chico Huff. Oh, uh, Chico Huff. I got two of them. I got. I didn't do any Chico Huff. I don't Sam know. Shepard? I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, or Sam Elliott. Both Sams. Sams are going with Sams. Wild card casting. Sam Huff. Young A. Blinken. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like that the best. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> Henry Fonda is, you know. There you go. That's a good. That maybe that might be the best. So Does then, he play uh, bass? some other crazy ideas. Mac Gallagher came up with John Candy. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, that'd be that'd a good great. one. Wait a minute. That's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Rappaport would be great. Oh, uh, that's a good one too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He Rappaport. did that PSA about get your kids and put their effing masks on there. I'm like, that's Matt. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's Matt. Uh, Dominic, I got a combination of Ray Liotta and Michael Keaton. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Keaton. Yeah. Nikki C., Joe Pesci. <laughs> Wait, I'm picking the nutty professor. What's his name? Jerry, Jerry Lewis? That's a nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said. But before he became Buddy Love, just as the professor, okay. whatever his name was. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, because he used to Miss Purdy, uh, yeah. excuse me, Miss Purdy. Uh, who else do I got? Mike DeRose. I got Crispin Glover. Oh, oh that'd be- that's perfect. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I, I perfect. didn't see no blind spot when I was driving. I saw no. <laughs> McFly, <laughs> and then Rick Anthony as himself. Exactly. Yeah, himself. They, they, you could. It would have to be that role. He'd be like, "You can't afford me." It'll be an introducing Rick Anthony. Yes. <laughs> as an introducing. Oh my goodness, as good Matt as Rick Anthony. Rick, Rick Anthony. <laughs> but that yeah, gets right. us. And that gets us through what I had as for casting Chico's vibe the Netflix series. Yeah. yeah. You know, but there is also the female casting, which uh, you know we can decide later. But. Right, female casting. Oh, friends. Oh, yeah, like some of the actors have gotten back to me. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get this number? <laughs> Don't ever call Don't me again. Don't ever call me again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that, that's that's ca- that's casting the Netflix series to be continued as we, we okay. figure out the we'll, next. We'll the, cast the, the female next episode next time. There's yeah, Ed and I were talking about some other episodes that you know that we could do. There's the uh, music fest that we oh, could do. Right. Right. Polka Platz. Polka <laughs> Polka Platz. <laughs> Polka is, ah. Fetz Platz. Fetz Platz. Polka, is Polka Platz. Cruise ships. There's Bahamas. Yeah, there's all kinds, all kinds of stuff. Of stuff. Oh Jesus! Right, exactly. All over the place. Yeah. Chico's Vibe will return after these short messages. Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. Normally, well, one of our recurring segments is songs from the set list where we talk about a, a Chico's Vibe song that we, you know, it's a, a kind of a critical part of what we do is, as Chico's Vibe. The last podcast, Dr. Ed Jakubowski picked 25 or 6 to 4. So I thought we'd spend, go a little more deeply in, into the song yes. than we usually do for 25 oh, or 6 to 4 for, 
for a few reasons. And the one is um, you know, 2564 is by the band, by the band Chicago. Chicago, I feel like, you know, thanks to bands like Chicago, Earth, Wind and Fire, that's all, part of the reason we exist as a horn band is due to yeah. bands like that, um, mm-hmm. Chicago. And secondly, it's a, you know, it, it's a, the song has a simple structure to it. But there's a lot of really cool elements that I thought, as the song itself, you know, we could talk a, a little With bit about. The infrastructure and, yeah. of the song. Yeah. Yeah. And what our listeners don't know yet is that we have, we have music, uh, we have instruments here ready for the podcast to sort of demonstrate. Wow. We <laughs> <laughs> we want to do a little bit of a, have you ever seen a right. Rick, Rick Beato? Do you know who yes. Rick Beato is? Who? He does like a recurring YouTube segment called What Makes the Song Great. Oh. Where he sort of know. analyzes the song. So I thought we'd take that approach. Yeah, that's 25, good, John. Yeah. 25 or 6 to 4. So 20, right. 25 or 6 to 4 was uh, written by Chicago's keyboard player, Robert Lamb. Yes. Okay. Robert Lamb, he, he wrote a bunch of Chicago's early Did he hits. Make Me Smile too? No, that was James Pankow. All right, all right. He wrote Beginnings. Um, does anybody really know what time it is? He sings on those. He also wrote Saturday in the Park. Um, question 67, All 68. hits. Yeah. And he kind of, after that time period, Peter Cetera sort of took over after that. But the early Chicago was a lot of uh, Robert Lamb and James Pankow. Yeah. Gab, I, I mentioned this earlier just because I brought up Saturday in the Park, and not to put you on the spot, but one thing about Saturday in the Park, to sort of divert us a little bit from 25 or 64, mm-hmm. it always kind of, I think I tried to learn the beginning to that on piano one time, and I couldn't, because I think the right hand's kind of doing, like, it sounds very simple when you're playing it, right. when you hear it, but the right hand's doing things that are a little bit syncopated, and the the left hand the left is doing hand the straight, is just, b- straight yes, beat. Just keeping quarter notes. Since we have a keyboard here, I was wondering, wow. maybe you could show what happens in the right hand, what happens in the left oh, hand, yeah. and how it goes sure. together. I mean, I don't know if... It, but I don't want to put you on the spot either, so... The right hand's just going... Can you guys hear that? Yes. I ain't got it. And then, yeah... The Which le- is very straightforward, and then... The- Your right hand is... Whoops. So you put it together and it's. it's That's cool. But it's kind of neat because they're doing different things and it together it sounds simple, but trying right. to do stuff it is like, on the wow. end. Yes. The end. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. And the voicings are just real. The voicing of the keys, too. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Very full. How's that tie into 25 or 6? Chicago. Same band. I know that. Same songwriter. Thought... <laughs> Same songwriter. I oh, just I wanted see. to that hear. That was just a separate issue. Yeah, I just wanted to hear Geb. Gotcha. Okay. Play, Geb, play something else. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting off on a tangent here. Play Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs> oh, I'm on. Do you want to do it? Go ahead. <laughs> All right, whatever. Do that cool. other Gershwin song I like. Oh, Gab. for God's <laughs> sake. The love song. It's uh, a new show, folks, called Dennis Tells Gabby <laughs> What to Do. He languishes in torment. <laughs> hey, the next podcast. Hey, Gab, can you bring the keyboard again? No! <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's this is what happens on Chico's Chico and Gabby gigs. Because this happens, and in my head, I hear this. <laughs> <laughs> that used God. to be the Joe and his theme song. Yes. <laughs> All right, you ready to get back to 25 yeah. or 64? Yeah, yeah, However, yeah, briefly, yeah, 25 ahead. or 64 was on the album entitled Chicago. Yeah. Subsequently became known as Chicago 2. Because right, Chicago, right, right. Chicago's first album was called... CTA. Chicago Transit Authority. Yeah. But they... Uh, they got sued by the, or threatened a lawsuit by the actual Chicago Transit Authority. What a bunch of jerks. Are you serious? Yeah. That's why they had to change. Their name <clears> of the band was th- Chicago Transit you Authority. You think they would like, you know, take that as a compliment? They did not. Chicago's <laughs> a tough city. Well, the guy would ask for the fare in the morning. The guy would do, do that song. <laughs> you know that song you do. I'm here. I just need, a, I need to punch your ticket, sir. Yeah, all, the, yeah. all the subway drivers had to sing Chicago. They had to learn all the songs. <laughs> 
<laughs> As I was well, anyway. Um, but and every every Chicago album after that pretty much was just a Chicago and a, and a number. But uh, Chicago two included besides twenty five sixty four some other songs that everybody knows. There's uh, make me smile, color my world, maybe a little bit less than a wake up sunshine. But Dennis Chicano's favorite Chicago song, Fancy Colors. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dennis may be the only one to remember. Chicago 2 was also released as a quadraphonic LP. Quadraphonic. It was big for seven or eight minutes. Right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. They were trying to sell, like, the, instead of stereo, four, four <laughs> right, speakers. Yeah. It was like one spot in the room you had to sit to get all four. Yeah. It's like, you know, they had diagrams. Like, oh, here's where you got to sit. So, like, if you had five people, you all had to sit on top of each other. <laughs> That's totem pole. <laughs> totem pole music listening. Yeah. <laughs> the album was released January 1970. The song 2564 was released as a single June 1970. It went to number four on the Billboard one, Hot 100. That's the highest it reached. For the, for the year 1970 in the Hot 100, it was number 61. I always like to go back and do what the top five were for 1970. It was a classic year from my perspective. It was, number one was Bridge Over Troubled Water. Mm-hmm. Oh. Do you know that intro? That's tough. That's Gabby cool. Play yeah. a little bit. No, not to put you. <laughs> I didn't give a give a heads it's up. It's got a great intro, man. It does. But number two was they long to be close to you. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> close, to, oh. close to you is number two. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Number three was American Woman by the Guess Who. Oh. Uh, Number four was Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. Mm, um, BJ Thomas. Number five was. <laughs> You're so immature, Ken. <laughs> he said BJ. <laughs> <laughs> he just said play again. Oh, I thought that's why you laughed. He was like, uh, BJ. So you were like. <laughs> <laughs> number, and, and Roy Cox. <laughs> uh, number five was War by Edwin uh, Stone. Yeah. Uh, Who cares, y'all? What is it good for? Oh, absolutely nothing. Anyway, uh, it was 24 to might be Chicago's most iconic song. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what you, what you guys think about it. Chicago re-released it in the 80s, in 1986. Um, you might yeah. want to listen to it just to hear it once. In mixed your life results. If you never heard it. Mixed results. Yeah. yeah. The song 25 or 64, in terms of what it means... Do you guys know what it means? Because I, I do. I can tell you. I You're do. sitting there after smoking dope all night and drinking, right? And Could be. One dude looks up at the club. Man, it's 25 or 6 or 4. Let's go to bed. That's partially right, Dennis. Right. That was the cliff notes. The, yeah, go ahead. It, well, he was literally writing the song. song. It's a song it, about writing a song. Writing a song, and it's 25 or 6 to 4 in the right morning. In the, right in the middle of that minute. Right. Yes, right in the middle of the minute. He wrote really quickly. But anyway, talk a little bit about what makes this song great, what what we talked about. It's kind of a simple song structure. It opens with that descending Mm -hmm. five chords. There's no bridge, really, in the song, right? Just a verse verse and a chorus. Just like a chorus. And then the little outro. Um, But I I wanted to, maybe for our podcast listeners, that those descending five chords... Mm there's an argument about whether they derived it from a couple of other songs oh, to right, give you yeah. guys a, a head, heads up on. You don't look like you're going to reach for the guitar, though. For uh, oh, oh I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the two songs, they, um, they came out kind of sequentially were While My Guitar Gen- Gently Weeps and then uh, Babe, I'm Going to Leave You by Led Zeppelin. So it, it was 68, 69, and then 70 for 24, 64. Oh, um, right. But they all kind of have this descending five chord structure yeah but I was wondering Dennis uh, what was it's perfect right it's like the way Yanis does it I didn't even have to drop D John you how about not. that we're gonna talk about that though what does yeah. drop D mean well, that's later drop D means you take your E string your low E and you drop it but Down you don't do D any note. of the other strings. To a D note. And I'm going to pat myself on the back here because while we were rehearsing that the first time, yeah, she's like, well, you can't get the low, low. I said, John, why don't you drop D? Bang! Like that, instantly. <laughs> yes, another moment in Chicken's history. Don't you take history. credit yes. for that, Gabby. Hey, 
Which one are you playing? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Which song are you doing? Are you yeah, just what? demonstrating that they all go together? Hmm? What song were you playing there? This is I look at you all See the love oh, There that's sleeping It's wrong? No, no well, he was talking about Why the Why my guitar the changes Gently we Right, but the intro is that five Then it goes into the descending line <laughs> Now that's sleeping. So that's so how's, so, how's babe I'm gonna leave Babe, you? I'm gonna leave you. Pretty much the same thing, right? Well, hey, hey, I'm gonna leave you. <laughs> That's just like Robert Flint. Go ahead, Gab. Oh, I thought you were doing the uh, other time. Don't do that part. No, no, I thought. Well, I was anyway, playing. babe, I'm going to leave you. While my guitar's yeah, yeah, I was Sorry, playing. Let's do that. The whole tune. While my guitar gently weeps. Okay, we lost them. It's the same thing. Well, that's not how you play. Why my guitar gently weeps, though. He plays. You oh, you playing, mean the, the very intro? The intro. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's the piano. All part. right, can we go back to the beginning of this? That's what I'm talking about. We're playing the intro. The song. Well, I want you to play with me. Two, three, four. I look at the world and I see that it's sweeping while my guitar gently weeps. I look at the floor and I know it needs sleep sweeping. Still, my guitar gently weeps. Yeah, that's, that's the cool. chorus goes to major on that. Okay. Yeah, it goes to major, right? Right. It's just like Come on. waiting Wait. for the break of day. Yes. <laughs> Same chords, right? Yes. Searching so that's the whole for point of doing something this. to say. That's the whole point of doing this is to demonstrate to people how it's kind of like the exactly. same, same structure. Right. But one of the really cool things about 25-6-4, there's lots of cool things. There's, so there's descending five chords, but the vocals ascending over Go the up. five chords. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it sound really cool. Ah, yeah. good point, John. Yeah. yeah, it's got the great horn riffs. Is that so, all pan cow? The horn riffs, he does all the arranging. Yeah, because yeah. there's all that ball. Do, do, yeah. do, 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 That's why they're like kind of trombone heavy, too. Cause, yeah. Um, because he, he does the arranging. Then it's got great drums on it, too, you know. And maybe most iconically is Terry Kath. Terry Kath uh, was Chicago's yeah, gu um, guitar. guitar player, his guitar Oh, song. man. I was wondering, so one thing that we do, so there's the original key, and Peter Cetera's, vo Peter Cetera's vocals are incredible in this yeah. song. Mm -hmm. but, but Peter Cetera can get into the atmosphere yeah, the with, with his vocals. So we... And wasn't we, he like 21 or 22 yes, years yeah. of age, too? Yeah. So we, we don't do it in the original key. Right. Right? So um, we we take it down. We dropped it down. To okay. Boom. So what's the original? The original is this. And the, the interesting thing is the guitar just does that the whole time. Yes. With the bass. So... Robert Lamb has this like I do it on I try to simulate it electric piano part that's cool. going like just to give it a little it'll, bit of color fill it out. yeah because if not it would just be and what's nice too is there's like that that conflict 
of being a minor key. The verse is minor the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And it makes it like it gives it a little like, bit tense, like Tension. tenseness mm -hmm. to yeah. it. Yeah. And then it resolves to the chorus, and the chorus then goes major. Yeah. Same thing that George Harrison did yeah. uh, by my guitar. Right? It gives it that release. That's it like, really yeah, cool. That's nice. One thing that's kind of interesting. So then, like right after that, there's a little there's a little horn riff break. Yeah. But the horn riff breaks just over those descending five chords, right? Yeah. It's really neat. It does all kinds of stuff, but it's over those descending yeah. chords. Yeah. It's just all under that. You're hearing the professional side of Chico's vibe now, That's ladies right. and gentlemen. That's right. Exactly right. You really it's... go. We really go into the lower register too, which is yes. Is, is, is so fun. one thing I'll complain about with the chord change. So the James Packall wrote the horn riff. Yeah. So the trombone is doing really cool stuff. Yeah. But it's all straight slides. Yeah. When you change the key, you lose the straight slides. It's yeah. like <laughs> right, but it still sounds here. really neat. Yeah. And that's only because it saves. My vocal cords. Yes. Because mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm not, you know, waiting for the break of day. And then the planting lights against you. Know. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, it's nuts. Well, not to skip to the end, but, but I love the way it ends, too, with those chords. Uh, great ending. Well, that's yeah. what I'm going to ask Gab to... So, uh, well, actually, there were two things, uh, and maybe... You maybe hit on it in the in the chorus, the vocal harmonies. Is there anything different going on there, or is it just the chords? No, it's just um, like over in the original key. So it's an F chord, and the vocals are just going. Okay. There we go. Cool. So they're all just triads. Okay. Yeah. So what? What are the chords? The weird chords at the yeah, in my mind they're weird chords at the end because the trombone. What's weird, weird is stuff. there's no there's no chords in the piano. Go, it's all just horns and the guitar going. That's the that's the descending line. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So the it's you know that you're coming out of the out of the the end of the tune is. Set you up for something next, but right? yeah, and it's this it's 25 cool, or six to four, right? Cool yeah, like yes. horn arrangement, yeah. So, the things that make it iconic for us in terms of how we do it, I mean, one, people just want to hear, well, we always have to hear Dennis say, We're a horn band, if you're a horn <laughs> band, you right, gotta yeah. play some Chicago. <laughs> yeah. And then for me, I'm just like, Please don't do beginnings because <laughs> that means I gotta attempt to do the, the, the solo, which I can't play, but. I like when we do 25 or 6 to 4. Yeah. And Yaddish is kind of the, the feature on that. Yeah, Gabby's yeah. vocal yeah. and, and Yaddish. And we, what do you think is the longest we've let Yaddish solo? Oh, God. <laughs> I remember, oh, I remember there was a time, maybe, it could, I don't know, down the shore somewhere. Where the other guys, the horn guys left the stage. Cabanas. Cabanas. <laughs> was it Cabanas? Cabanas was the one I think where it went on. I want to say while. it was like 15 minutes. I'm sure it wasn't, <laughs> yeah. but it went on but, and on and on. I'm pretty sure the only version of you guys playing the song on YouTube is the Rose Tree show where you yeah. had the smoking speaker. We had, oh, yeah. Oh, that was great. We had the fake amp with the smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the out. Oakmont Fire Company come out <laughs> to put it out. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. This will do all kinds. So the Terry Cat original guitar solo. It's very, yeah. uh, it's really cool because it's, you know, there's a little bit of classical element, and there's almost like an Indian element to it. And then he goes with the wah wah pedal. Yeah, yeah. Yaddish does whatever he wants to in the moment, which yeah. is really cool. Sometimes yeah. he'll be like Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, he'll yeah, be Terry Cat. Yeah. He'll be uh, uh, Jimmy Page. Yes, yes. <laughs> 
As far as you can tell, I think he really enjoys it. I oh, he does. does too. Sometimes we talk about songs. I we... like this portion of the uh, show, Ja. Oh, good. I'm glad Very you do. Very cool. Yeah, this like is the, a new he, avenue for us. He yeah. didn't like the whole beginning. <laughs> no, he <laughs> this did. Part he <laughs> Next time we're going to do Green Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we. I have, break it I'm down. picking the song this time. Right, right. But I mean, so sometimes we talk about songs, even though they're I call them an iconic part of what we do. Sometimes we don't like doing them. This one, I feel like. We still like doing oh, a, every, a lot. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like doing the, the yeah. riff. I like doing it. I always joke that, like, I hate everything that we do. This is but, one you don't hate. No. there's. I mean, Sinatra stuff, any of that stuff I love. Chicago songs, things of that nature I do. Now, if you want to get into Run Around Sue and Brandy. And, right. You know. I have so, to say <laughs> something about 25 or 64. Yeah. In, in context of the venue that you can that it's performed in i for some reason enjoy it in a small place like a bar because it seems to blow people away i mean like when yeah. you do it out even like at rose tree where you're playing to all those people i'm not saying the you excitement's any less the... but it's when you're there and they're like i see people that stop what they're doing yeah and and are just like oh my god they know this song or at least for some people and younger even younger people are maybe hearing it for the first time and are just like wow yeah you know, no it, that, it, makes, that makes yeah sense. i remember one time we did it at the camp out for hunger oh yeah, yeah. right and the like their feature band that day was either the hooters or just maybe rob bazillion was oh it was the hooters yeah there were right. the two of them yeah two, two of them right yeah. and i tried to get us a bazillions that, over at the side over there listening to us do it and I remember him like making a beeline up to Gabby when the song was done. And he's going, my God, that was great, man. You were able to sing that like that. That was fantastic. That's really cool. Because those are they're really talented guys. Yeah. So. yeah. Very what nice. A, yeah. One other thing is kind of our horn arrangement. It's a Mike DeRose arrangement. So it means it's got fun. It's a little bit different than the original. Mm -hmm. A little bit funky. It's, but it's pretty cool. It works with, with yeah, what yeah. we do. So if you guys... Favorite Chicago song, favorite Chicago song that we do, two separate things. Like, Gab, do you have a... Out of all, the one that we do now? Yeah, like... Or well, one we're going to learn. Do you have a favorite Chicago song, favorite Chicago song that we do? Make Me Smile and 25. They're let, my Dennis, let Dennis go first. Yeah. <laughs> They're my two yeah. favorites. Who jazz, Gabby? Yes! <laughs> That's all right. It, this happens all the time. Go ahead. <laughs> Make Me Smile is Dennis's... They're tie. Do you have another like favorite Chicago song that we don't do? Well, um, does like question sixty seven and sixty eight ninety nine? Um, do we do that? Sixty seven and sixty eight. No, that, used no. To do. You were asking we about your ten ninety nine. Was it ever a holdover? <laughs> no. He's talking about his ten ninety nine. We talking yeah. about taxes? No. Oh. <laughs> question you know, sixty seven is you hit it on the head when you said when who took over the band after a while. Ed Mount? No. <laughs> oh, Chicago. Chicago yes, Terry. Oh, well, so uh, what happened is Terry, like Terry Kath died. Yeah. Terry yeah. Kath shot him, accidentally shot Killed himself. Killed him. Yeah, accidentally, right. And then uh, uh, it came, became more of a Peter Cetera band. Yeah, it became more and, poppy. And what's his name? David Foster. David Foster. Yeah, Foster. then, mm -hmm. yes, yes. They became like a power duo. Those well, two. that's when I start not liking him. But when did Saturday come out? Was that during the Cetera era? Yeah, that, was, that was the Terry. Terry Kath, that was like yeah. 73. Yeah. Yeah. So That's off I of, liked it up to that point. Off of Chicago 5. making all those other, I don't know. I don't want to disrespect him. <laughs> no, that's but, fair. But I like I like hard to say I'm sorry. Me too. I had songs. it to break. And <laughs> and uh, what else? Uh, Ooh, please don't, baby, please don't go. Because that's, oh, that's if you leave that's me now. Leave. That's yeah. when Cetera started to get his confidence. Yeah, yeah, but that's when I started to hate him. Yeah, Terry Kath was still alive for that. If you I like the whole orchestra and the strings. I liked them when they were do, do, driving do, do, hard. Do, do, do. Well, wait a minute. Well, I, I liked them when they. I started asking Gabby what his favorite Chicago song for. <laughs> don't ever <laughs> try to silence me. <laughs> Gabby. I, I like. When we do just you and me, yeah, that's great, a great song. nice arrangement. It sounds really good. The yeah. whole band sounds good. It is such a great song. But you do a great job on it, Gab. Yeah, uh, especially up you. in that upper thank you. register. Like, yeah. it's a lot of strength behind it's it. It's such a great song. You do a great and job it's a, too, Ed. Oh, thank you. But that's another one where it's not a typical ending, like the ba da 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 da
Yeah. It's just awesome. It's awesome to be a horn player when you have yes. a song like that. Yeah. I don't know if I can convey that. Just agree. You're not going. Gab. Eh. <laughs> 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 yes. Okay. So just just you and me. That's okay. Cool. One that we do. Yeah. And then one that we don't do that I always wanted to do is I can't remember the name of it, but it's the one that starts. Um, what is that? Oh, uh, call on me. She call on what is that? It's call on me. Call on me. That's call it. Me you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great song. <laughs> that's exactly how it goes, right? <laughs> Parker, I put sang that into in. the phone. What? So just... Put your part in with that. Just <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, that's one of my favorite Chicago teams. Cool. It's just got everything in it. I agree. Yeah. And Ed, I know you'll have feeling stronger every day. I think you've yeah. mentioned that, right? Yeah, I, I repeat myself, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, that's Ed. a great song. <laughs> Sing the horn part. Oh, yeah. That could bring our Chicago segment <laughs> to an end. <laughs> that that is why I'm not a vocalist in this group. Uh, uh, you're a good vocalist, Dad. Thank you. And that that uh, so the song that I'm choosing for uh, next month's song from the set list is um, "Can't Take My Eyes Off You." Ah. You're picking that? Yeah, because it right. features both Chico and Gabby. <laughs> You're just too good, to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a great horn section, a Four Seasons song. It lets you talk about Jersey Boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You love that, right? Mm-hmm. Love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So that's that's our uh, next month's song from the mm-hmm. set list. All right. I'm doing the horn parts. So we're, we're getting to the end of our, of our uh, podcast this month. <laughs> Wait a second. Hey, this is Kissel. Hey, we have on the line a special guest. For the- oh, I think we lost him. <laughs> <Did> we- All right. <laughs> so we have on the line a special guest. He's the featured trumpet player at the Sixers game, but he's here. He's here in two places at once. Yes, he's and here right now that? because, as you know, Dennis, May 5th. Uh, Cinco de Mayo, another oh! big Chico and Gabby festivity day. That's right. But we, we in Chico's vibe, <laughs> we in, we in Chico's vibe. Does that guy have life alert? I think he might be trying to communicate. Whoever it is, can't get to phone, running out of ox by gin. <laughs> we bad. have one. We have two of the quintessential. Uh, Mexican influenced trumpet players in the United States to prepare us for Cinco de Mayo. Wow. That one is on the line right now, direct from Tony's toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tony DeSantis is here to serenade yeah. us with whatever Mexican music he would choose to play. Tony, can you uh can you regale us with your 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 favorite Mexican song? <laughs> que quiero hora <laughs> oh, t- Tony, give me some mariachi stuff. Come on. No que prende. Give me a Herb Al- <laughs> Give me a Herb Albert song. Brought to you by 1000 Plus. Oh Jesus. oh, Jesus. Just as far as you can get from a Mexican Herb Albert. 
Why? Why did I book Tony? Tony's appearance. I have not heard by... one Mexican song. <laughs> oh, no. Tony. <laughs> Tony, get... <laughs> Tony, give me a little bit of Celito Lindo. Wait, did you hear that, Tony? Oh, uh, I don't know. No, I'm, no, I'm Italian, not Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god how about some flight of the bumblebee <laughs> and we're now into like gypsy music folks from romania that was it's romanian holiday you know in, in, I, I think the, concept, the conceptual idea was good <laughs> <laughs> until it was executed no you know what i think it was i think when we heard him during rehearsal those were copper pipes now he's using pvc oh. <laughs> so the sound is is it took a dive <laughs> you know? hey tony do you have a favorite chicago song do you still think that <laughs> Tony, do you understand the concept of this segment <laughs> right here? <laughs> I think he's marching around his living room right now. <laughs> then, they, then you hear burn. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, uh, well, how much? How about something for May Day? <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing, the funny thing is now he's stuck in a loop. Like he, like he are can't. You, he'll be in just, the bathroom all night. Oh <laughs> are you just flipping through the book? <laughs> Excuse me. We need a wellness check on a Mr. Tony DeSantis. He might be found in his bathroom going in a circle with his play. Tr- I think we just lost all our audience. Stop. Please. Well, he just did silly love songs. That that brings us to the end. <laughs> you didn't talk about May Day. Uh, <laughs> she recalled to turn him off. <laughs> I think I think Tony's been sending May Days this whole time. Uh, <laughs> the French I need help. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is his. This is his revenge. <laughs> Can you do? That's... Ah, very good. Canta de ore, porque no solo señale, se li tolle no se corazone. Bye, Tony. <laughs> There is no vocals on this stuff. <laughs> yes, Tony, yes, thank please. you very much. Thanks, Tony. Um, it's a, it, Mayday was big on I thought you hung up on him. He will not be hung up on <laughs> We're done. That closes episode. We got to pick out the song that we want to do or that we like the band to do. Oh, about- songs that we like the band to do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's go around. Okay. Who's first this You're time? Always, you, usually it doesn't matter. You go first. I'm going first. I want to do... You, you mentioned American Woman earlier tonight. I mean, that's fucking great. I would love to do that. But when I was coming in tonight, I'm thinking Legend of a Mind by the Moody Blues, otherwise known as Timothy Leary. Timothy Leary. You got it. You got it. Timothy Leary is dead. We can do that down the shore. People will love it. <laughs> Don't totally go for it. <laughs> oh, Geb, what do you got? These Eyes. That's a oh, great yeah, song, yeah. Geb! That was the theme to uh, The Eyes of uh, 
Laura Morris. Laura Morris. Not in Laura Morris. Uh, she was married to Jim Baker, Tammy Faye, <laughs> and her bio, oh, okay. her bio film <laughs> that Jessica Chastain <laughs> played. Wait, yeah. I watched yeah, that. Yeah, that was the theme. That was, These eyes. Whoever really got da, to da, play da, her was real hot. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Ed Mount, what do you got? Set the uh, free, free. Set them free. Uh, oh, uh, no, sting. Was that kind of a sting or the police? That is no, sting. sting by himself, himself, right? They're stingle. Did you ever see that uh, Saturday Night Live? Where Sting's Stingle. at the copier. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sting making copies. Yeah. Sting 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 <laughs> I want Ed to sign off as Walken. For <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm going to pick it. Don't yeah. you forget about me because George played it the other day. I think, uh, yeah. I think Ed would sound great. Don't, don't, don't you forget about me. Don't you. Da, 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 da. Uh, one of those 80s songs. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm, right. I'm it's cool. time, for, time for us to sign off. Listeners, we've come to the end. Of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll catch everyone uh, for episode ten next month. Hey, 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 hey! Waiting for the break of day. <laughs> Searching for something to say. <laughs> Let's see lights against the sky. Yeah. Giving up, I close my eyes. eyes yeah. Sitting cross legged on the floor. 25 or 6 to 4. Gently. I, I only wish that happened while we were recording. It's, it's I so can make silly. that happen. Is that that's recording? A, yeah, that's <laughs> <the> recording. <laughs>